Today I have some summer porch decor ideas for you, so keep watching. I'm Brandy. This is Making It My Own DIYs. Welcome. The first project is going to be a hanging mood light. We're going to run to Dollar Tree and get a metal wreath ring. This is not the largest, but like the medium size one. I have five of these globes. You can do five or six. They're the solar crackle lights. Be sure you check and make sure everything's working. Here they are. I'm going to use some florist wire, a garland of some sort, or you can use loose greenery. And then I thrifted this big bag of this rope, and actually I think it ended up in two bags. It's a lot of it. So we're going to pick our placement for where we want our lights to hang, and they're going to be hanging from this wreath. So if you use five, you just kind of kind of have to eyeball where you want to put them because they're not going to be evenly spaced around the wreath. Use six, and then you can hang one at each of those crossbars. So just make it easier on yourself and do six. I have cut some little pieces of that wire just a couple of inches long to help us get these wrapped in place. You can pop these hangers right off of your globes. See, it works. Be sure that it works. It's got a little on and off switch in there. No tab to pull out, so no tabs on these. All right, so this is going to hang from its hanger attached to the wreath, and it's going to attach to the underneath side of the wreath. That's where it's going to hang down. I have chosen to put mine on the crossbar here uh, on the second from the inside. Using this florist wire is going to make sure that it doesn't slide back and forth and that everything is nice and secure because if we put this outside on the porch, we want it to hold up to the wind, right? I'll show you one more time. And now if you have an odd number rather than an even number and you do this, you can still put it on the wreath. You can put as many, you can just do three if you wanted to. It's totally up to you. But I am going to, the main thing for me is to get them spaced evenly. Just like if you had a chandelier in your house, you would want those lights spaced evenly. That's how they make them. So now, once you know that everything's where it should be, you can take the ends of the wire that you didn't wrap around the hanger and wrap those around the wreath. That's going to give it a little grip, almost like its hands are out to the side and hold it on. So that's going to help hold it in place. Get your tools if you need to. Protect your fingers because these florist wires can, can poke you. I've definitely had little pokes in my fingers from them. So once you get all those lights on, you can get your rope ready. Now if you don't have this type of rope, just go ahead and use whatever type of rope you have. If you don't have rope, you can use like a burlap ribbon would probably give about the same effect. And you can get those at Dollar Tree almost any time. Alright, so I'm going to start off by tying this right on the inner two sections. I'm just going to tie a knot. You can double it if you want to, but you can use a little glue also to hold it in place. Turn that so that the frayed end or the loose end is inside of the wreath form. We don't want that on sticking on the outside where everybody can see it, so we're going to sort of disguise it. We're going to wrap this around and it is going to give it a little more security to the hangers that these lights are on to keep them from sliding around as well. Not to mention, it gives it a very pretty rustic look for outside. I've mentioned before, if you've been here before, you know this, but for those of you who are new to the channel or just stopping by, we live in a, it's like a log cabin and we live by the lake and we have big oak trees in the yard and magnolia trees. It's just really beautiful out here. And I like to try to go with my natural surroundings for my decor, my personal decor. But you can always customize this to make it your own any way that you like it. And you can also customize this for seasons or holidays, just depending. We're going to make it easy for you to change this up. So it's something that you can use more than once. Maybe you could just keep it on your porch forever or until your little solar lights croak. How about that? We're going to continue to go around here. And I want you to see how, you see how I've pushed that toward the inside? It's almost like we're jumping that. We're going to jump it 
so that it holds it in place and then we're going to continue around and we'll do each section like that. If you have a shorter rope or just in segments like I have, you can just take a little bit of hot glue when you get to the end. Make sure it's on a side where you can't see it. So maybe on the underneath side or all the way to the outside where the garland is going to be covering that up. So that's what I did. I put it out toward the outside where the garland will be covering it. You start again where you left off. Take a little bit of that rope, put it to the inside, glue it down, and then continue along with your twisting. Now there are going to be some sections that you see here in us twisting this rope where there's some open spaces you can see toward the outside because the diameter is bigger on the outside than the inside, right? It's a circle. But we're not going to worry about that because that's going to be closed in shortly. Grab your greenery or your garland. I say garland is the easiest one for me. I knew I wanted to use it for this, but it's a little easier because it's already put together for you. But you can do this in little segments with uh, just plain greenery. So if you grab some fern greenery, say you like this look, get it at Dollar Tree because they do have some. And then you can just wire your picks on there or tie your picks on. If we use the jute, it's going to help fill in the wreath. It's going to blend in seamlessly and you won't even notice it. It, it has a really pretty uh, aged country effect, you know. I really like it. So just going to continue around double knots. Trim off what you don't need. You're not going to see what's under there because you're going to cut it off short enough and you're not going to see it. What you're seeing now is the top of the wreath which is the part that will be facing the ceiling. That's the part we're working on now. So the greenery that I'm using I've decided to keep that garland sort of running down the side so that it will spray or hang over the inside and the outside. Back to the beginning of where we started and I didn't want to pile that on top of the other and just continue around because it's not enough to make it evenly thick. I hope that makes sense to you. It would be one section really, really thick, and then the rest of it would look like something was missing. So I chose to cut that section off and use those little free pieces to fill in any place that looks like it might need a little something extra. Now this is really easy to just pop off the pieces that come off and then grab a little bit of hot glue and tack down your free pieces of fern wherever you feel that they look best. And I just kind of spin it around, look at all directions anytime you're using greenery or doing any projects really. You want to look at it from all angles to make sure you haven't missed anything. So I'm fluffing this out, making this greenery nice and thick and pretty and make sure the pretty side is up. We don't want anybody, you know, saying, yeah, that's definitely fake fern. We want it to, you know, give them, give them a second look, make them look twice, make them wonder, right? You can do that with good quality greenery. But mine was thrifted, so I have no idea where this came from. But I bet you could find something at Timu, not sponsored, and, you know, at the Dollar Tree, something like that. Maybe in clearance sales. You might even find something at Hobby Lobby that's like spring clearance or summer clearance, since they're always so far ahead. I'm going to take three two-foot strands of the same rope that we used before. Three is going to make our hanger for the top. If you want to do even numbers, you can certainly do even numbers, but I think three will suffice for this. I want to stretch our dollar, so I'm trying to save as many project pieces as I can. Save as much money on each one as I can. So you can see here where it will naturally open so that you can tie to the side because we have that little gaps, those little gaps in the string that are toward the outside. We're going to use that to our advantage. I'm going to go to the second loop from the outside, not the inside, but the outside, tie a little knot, flip the little free end right there, it's going to go on the inside, and then I'm going to glue the knot, and I am going to glue, I am having the worst trouble with glue guns right now, y'all, I'm just, I can't. You're probably going to see a bunch of different glue guns in the next few videos, because they are giving me fits. So you're going to just glue that in there too. It's going to keep your knot secure. This is not heavy anyway. If you choose to use a heavier or bigger rope, then it will be. So just keep in mind, you know, once you put your lights on, that's going to give it a little weight too. You don't want to put anything on here that is going to fall apart or slip. Same process, going to the second one from the outside, tying that in that little gap. It's going to help close that gap. You can glue on either side of the knot, which will also close the gap. And you can glue into the knot. 
and we're going to have the three sections sort of if you imagined a triangle or an upside down triangle depending on how you have this positioned on your table while you're crafting so that you have three points to hold this beautiful piece up again i cannot stress enough how you should check your lights when you're doing projects before you use them now side note but it is about this i bought these five I got them all home. I tried them all in the store. Tried them all when I got home. Everything worked great. Got ready to do my finished product um, in the video and realized that one of the lights was refusing to work. It would flash when you turned it on, but then it wouldn't work. So, yeah, keep that in mind. But you can always return things to Dollar Tree when they don't behave themselves, which is what I will most likely do. So, I have these beads. They are white beads. I don't want the white on here because I'm not going for a farmhouse look. So, I want this to look more aged, antiqued, or, you know, country, rustic looking. Folksy, if you want to, to say it that way. So, the glued side was glued onto a tiered tray that I took apart that was broken. And the other side is slick. So, we want the pretty side up. And we're going to use these beautiful beads now that we have distressed them and made them look nice and aged very nice so easy to do with that antiquing wax and a wet baby wipe perfect all right so we're going to put these three ends together and lift them up now i'm looking to make sure that everything is level to the eye you know i'm not using a level here but you could to make sure everything is level so i know how long those rope pieces need to be and i'm going to keep holding them at the right level add some cool glue not the hot you'll burn yourself up cool but please protect your fingers don't don't do as i do just do it as i say but very easily you can twist that end with the cool temp glue with your fingers and then feed those beads right down there on there now these beads were thrifted because they came off of a tiered tray that i had worked on so i'm not sure where they came from but you can pretty much find beads anywhere now because they're so popular in decor and in crafting projects so i've just slid those three down pretty side up and when I get them the right height that I like them, and I just guessed, I didn't measure, I just, you know, decided where I wanted it. Push the beads down, they're not glued on, so at this point you can slide them around. And then I realized that the end of this will fit right back into there, making a beautiful triple loop on the top. How about that? And then once you super glue that or hot glue it in place, it is not going to move and it will stay for you for a long time. Now. Assuming you're using Gorilla Glue, if it's going to be outside and super glue, that's what's going to give it longevity. Otherwise, you use a cheap glue and it's going to release and your lights are going to fall and probably break. So just be super careful with this. And if you don't like this type of hanger, just go on and put on there whatever you want to. It's pretty easy to change things up. So now I'm going to put these lights on here. I'm going to put them right back on their little hooks or their hangers and get them ready for the reveal. I'm just, they just snap on y'all really. They just snap right back in. If they seem like they're getting a little bit loose before you put them in, give them a squeeze and then open them and put them onto there and that'll hold them in place. Hey friends, I have some incredibly exciting news to share with you today. So how would you like to set sail on the crafting adventure of your lifetime? Introducing the Crafty Cruise Getaway, a one-of-a-kind experience where you can join your favorite creators from five YouTube channels for a relaxing and dreamy Caribbean getaway. Imagine spending five days surrounded by turquoise Caribbean waters, white sandy beaches, and fellow craft enthusiasts like yourself. It's the ultimate crafting getaway you will remember forever. You'll have the chance to meet and greet each YouTube creator in person. Picture yourself chatting, sharing ideas, taking selfies, laughing, and making memories, all while being inspired by their creativity firsthand. Various live crafting sessions will be held where each creator will guide you through unique and exciting projects. You'll be able to learn new techniques, discover fresh ideas, and take your crafting skills to the next level. Oh, and did I mention the fantastic onboard amenities? Enjoy world-class dining, luxurious accommodations, and many exciting activities to entertain you throughout the cruise. 
Take advantage of this incredible opportunity to connect, create, and cruise with some of the most talented crafters on YouTube. Due to limited space, head on over to our website, craftycruisegetaway.com, for more information on reserving your spot. Be sure to subscribe to all the participating channels for updates and exclusive content leading up to the event. I can't wait to see you on board the Crafty Cruise Getaway. The next project is our folding table flip. Very exciting. Okay, so y'all, this piece I got from Goodwill. Another lady that I have befriended there found it. She was gonna get it and take it home, but it really did need some TLC. And she asked me, did I want it? And I told her, yes, I would love to have it. So I've had it for a while and it's, it's very functional, but I don't like the look of it. I don't like that orangey looking finish and the, the painting. I mean, somebody did a beautiful job on it, but it just really doesn't fit my home decor. So I want to make it look a little more rustic, a little more woodsy, cottagey, so that it will fit into my home. And that is so easy to do. And I'm going to show you what we're going to do. And by the way, did you watch that entire advertisement? about the cruise getaway i would love 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 to meet you guys you can come and visit and craft with me and hang out after we craft and ask questions and we're gonna have a blast so time is limited run over there and get yourself straight get yourself ready to go with us and meet us you see how this table folds you can just take it around and just Take it around your house. I hope I find a million more of these because they are beautiful and they're so nice to flip. So nice. After I have sanded with my sander outside, this is how it looks. There are some pieces on here you can see where I didn't get every single bit of that varnish or stain or whatever that orange looking finish was. I didn't get it all off. So I'm, we're gonna work with that because I want it to look old and distressed on the legs anyway. And I think I do accomplish that. So be sure y'all stick around to the end of the video when you see the, the final reveal. You can see what I have um, going on with this table and the changes that have been made. All right, all sanded. Now I've got it on my table. You can use a sticky cloth for this to get off all of your dust or you can just use a dry towel or a damp towel. I like to use a slightly damp microfiber cloth to get all of the dust and shavings and paint particles and all that off there. We're going to start with a very nice clean surface because on the top we're going to be painting that and I don't want anything to muddy up that paint. Now be sure when you're sanding and cleaning that you're getting the entire surface, the back, the outside, the edges, the inside, the underneath, the bottom of the feet, do it all. All right, so it's been wiped, it is dry, and now I'm gonna use this wood tint. This is a very dark color. Very pretty, and it's gonna be perfect for what I want. I'm using a sponge brush. We're not gonna do anything with the top. We're gonna to do everything but the top. So with this, it is a very quick drying tint. It is, it does what a stain does essentially, but it doesn't have the odor and it dries very quickly. So I'm making sure that I paint all the surfaces. I'm trying to move quickly, wiping this on, and then, and you need to use long streaks when you do it, because if you don't wipe it fast enough, you're going to have little white marks in there. I suppose you would if you used some type of a stain also, but I'm making sure I try to get it even. And then I'll just take a rag, a clean rag, of course, or clean paper towels, and wipe off the excess. It's gonna settle into the sanded areas. You can see on the edges there, it's gonna be darker on the edges, around the nails. I think this is gorgeous. If you don't want the nail pieces showing, you could obviously cover that up with paint or, you know, you can work your magic with some spackle or something like that, but I don't mind the hardware showing in this um, at all. You could also do like a rust, like a faux rust finish on the nails if you wanted to, but I'm not worried about that. We're not gonna get too complicated on this, right? Because the process of painting and staining may not take a lot of time, but the dry time is what really makes a difference. 
So be sure, like you can see here, I'm going to get all over the sides. I will open the table up and get down all of the legs. You know, I'm not going to make you obviously watch that whole process, but just know that I do that. Every single bit of it. You can flip it up on the, the table top since we're not painting that, and you can do that. But you can see here the difference already in the color of the wood from that rich, rich, dark that I'm putting on there is to that orangey color that I had on there. And y'all, I'm almost out of foam brushes. I've got to order foam brushes. I've got to order sanders, chippy brushes. I got to get prepared because y'all know Halloween and this last quarter of the year that is coming up after the 4th of July, I am going to be doing some crafting because it's my favorite time of year our subscriber giveaway is in november every year so y'all be sure that you subscribe and hit the notification bell because you don't want to miss those giveaways i mean i really like to spoil people so you will have a package full of all kinds of goodies there may be thrift flip i mean uh, thrift pieces there may be new pieces that i bought could be dollar tree could be timu could be amazon could be extras that I have that I throw in the box that I like, you know, um, could be remnants of really pretty ribbon or things that are difficult to find. You see how rustic that looks? I absolutely love it. So now we're moving up to the top and I have popped the top up and I'm going to very roughly put on some sheepskin white it's like a white off-white color that i put on the top of here i've dry brushed it on here and now i'm going to go down each one of these cracks this was with a little um i think this is like a a three pack or four pack maybe of tools that you can get from dollar tree and then i'm going to take my little sanding block here and i'm going to sand it a little bit too just to make the surface smooth in case we have any um, raised areas. We don't want that. We want to be nice and smooth for this beautiful, beautiful wall decal. Y'all, this is a wall decal. Uh-huh. I got it from Timu. Again, not sponsored. But I got it from Timu, and I am loving using these. So beautiful. Look at this. I absolutely love everything on here. Everything. Every bit of it. Even the process of peeling this off the backing was beautimous. My table was nice and clean and painted and dust free and I am going to put down my decal. Now just take your time, be slow when you do this. You can pick it back up if you're very careful and slow and put it back down. Look how nice this smooths down with my hand. What I like about this type of look is the potential for it to look aged and hand painted. It's absolutely beautiful to me and in my head this turned out even better than I thought. It, it really did. I'm using my little squeegee or my scraper tool that came with my Mod Podge and I'm going to go down and wipe, oh, well I say wipe, scrape at it. It's not a hard thing. I don't want to cut into it like with anything metal. So I'm using this like a plastic type tool. I'm going all over it. You can use the old credit card, your driver's license, whatever. I'm going to just snip off the overhang here and then I will sand it down so it is nice and smooth to that edge. Y'all look, I need to do my roots. Okay, so I'm just using a, a little emery board here to get that sanded off, make it nice and smooth on the edge, because again, I want it to look as though it's hand painted. Now I'm gonna take my razor and go right down here. You can use a box cutter, the side of your scissors, a utility blade, a rotary cutter, um, any uh, a kitchen knife if you don't have anything else to go down once you put a decal on go down on any material that has slats in it if you want to make it look hand painted and cut through there and make it look as though it was actually painted on there because we'll be able to open it see that and sand it on the inside too every place that we cut you know we want to trim it down so you don't see any snags you want it to be nice and neat all those little extra details y'all really make things look so much better and, and well thought out. All right, once that's done and the whole table is dry, I'm going to be using some outdoor Mod Podge because I might want to put a plant on this. I might want to put a glass of tea on here, something that, might, that may sweat in the summertime. Well, you know it's going to sweat in Alabama. But I'm going to put this on here 
this is thick. I wanted to show you the texture of it because it's not exactly the same as the regular Mod Podge. It is very thick. So I've just grabbed a sponge brush and I am putting it all over not only the decal where it attaches to the table but the entire tabletop the edges and then when I open the table I also put it in between uh, the opening there right down the middle I'm trying to get the same amount of thickness all the way through I'm gonna open the table so that it can dry next is the sunflower tin sign Moving right along, I'm going to use a green, a brown, and a yellow. I'm going to use sheepskin, not white, even though it shows that. I'm going to grab some ribbons. I'm going to use some stencil brushes and a bridge brush. And then from a central stencil, I have two of these beautiful stencils that I'm going to be using. And I thrifted this little tin sign. It was already painted brown. I don't mind the brown. It's kind of dusty. It needs to be cleaned. So I'm going to grab my cleaner and spray it down. And then I'll just wipe it really well. Get any dust, any sticky, any anything on it. Clean it off. It's got some little holes in it right there. It must have had an applique of some type. Maybe some little raised area. But I want to fill that in. So I'm just going to put a little tape on the back. And then I'm going to sand the front really well. I want to get some of the shiny off. I'm doing this before I put the paint over those holes so that I don't have, I'm not sanding off all the work I do. Then I'll just take a bridge brush and just put some brown right in there to make it a little less noticeable. But honestly, once we get the stencils on, you're not even going to know that's there. So I'm going to find the positioning that I like for my sunflowers, no particular measurements. If you don't have a tin sign, don't worry about it. Grab some signs from Dollar Tree, put two of them together, and stencil them on the back. You can certainly do that, make it easy for you. $2.50, right? Because I know not everybody has good thrift stores, so just use your imagination. We can definitely give the look of something being high quality if we take the time to do it. So I'm going to tape off the areas that I don't want to get paint on and I'm going to tape it off where nothing will move. I'm going to start with the center of the flower and yes the sign is brown and so is this paint. But you'll see the way that I put it on it's going to give it a quite a nice look I think. I'm going to cover the entire center of these two sunflowers with this brown. I'm just going in swirly motions and you'll see me just kind of dot it in some areas like on the outside where I don't want it to get on the petals because the stencil is kind of intricate. If I tried to tape off everything in between painting, I would be, there would never be time for anything to dry and you wouldn't be able to see the video. So you do what works best for you though. So now I've got both of the, the centers of the flowers are brown. I'm gonna use a little bit of jet black in the same brush that I had the brown on. I'm gonna kind of mix those two together and right around the outside of that stencil, I'm going to do almost like a outer ring that's gonna be black. Now it's still in the center, but it's gonna be black. If you don't have sunflowers or that's not your thing, whatever stencil you have that you wanna use, you can use on this. I love sunflowers. I think they are great for summer and going into fall. And even in fall, I do sunflowers in fall, definitely. But I think this would look really good on my porch, so that's what I'm kind of going with. Again, make yours your own. Same motion here, and this is actually a sunflower yellow, and the brown was a chocolate brown and jet black. So I'm going to use circular motions here. Circle, 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 all around those. And you have to be careful, you know, you just, you want to make sure that you use the least amount of paint as possible. And if you have to layer it, then you can layer it. But if you put, if you leave too much paint on your brush when you're offloading, it's just going to go underneath the edges and muddy up your picture. Now, there are some little places here where I actually did that and didn't do a very good job with straightening it out. So I will go back and fix that. I'll trace it out with a little of that chocolate brown and everything will look nice and crisp. 
and you can do the same thing. Now I'm going to take some of that sheepskin and I'm going to go all over where it says locally grown. Use any wording you want and you can leave the wording out if you want to. So I'm just going to go all over this area. I'm going to just do some pouncing with a little foam brush here. Just wanted to see if it made any difference. Turned out great. Chalk paint is so easy to stencil with, you know, just in my opinion. Now it's still wet, but I'm going to go ahead and take this off. Now the flowers are probably dry by now, but the locally grown is still wet. Here's what it looks like when you peel it off. I'm going to use my bridge brush, uh, one of the bridge brushes, and some of that same color and go over each of those areas. Now by bridge, I mean you actually close the gaps. So you can see when you have a stencil, the letters are open, but that's the way they do it so that it will attach to the plastic and keep the shape. Okay, so you see here how dark the green is. I'm adding some highlights. All I did was took my ivy green. I added a little bit of that sunflower yellow to it just to brighten it up a bit so that I could add highlights to the leaves because they really don't show up that much on that brown. But this works really nicely. I'm going to add a little more of that brown and black together and pounce most of it off. It's mostly brown there. And I'm going to just dot it very gently over where it says locally grown after of course that it is dry because I don't want to drag that white paint I want that paint to stay right where it is this is to make it look a little more aged as if it's been outside pollen has gotten on it you know it's had the the normal winds and the mud and the rain that splashed up on it because it's been outside right maybe even hanging off the side of somebody's barn hanging off the side of your house under your porch wherever and it just has some natural aging. Then I'm going to take some yellow and I am going to definitely take most of that off and I'm going to dot that all over the sign. Again, a little aging, a little interest. It's going to lighten it up just a bit. I'm going to start with really light, light dabbing and then I'll get a little heavier as you can see here. Picking up a little more paint, getting a little more confident with it and putting it all around the sign. Now the brown paint that I had I went around each of the yellow petals to clean that up and around the green sections to get it nice and crisp. But you know, again, you could probably avoid that whole thing by just making sure you don't put too much paint on there, make very light layers, and then work your way up. Love the look of it. Look how beautiful that black and brown looks in the middle of the flower. Really gave it some dimension. It's so nice. You can see the difference in the leaves. And you can see them a little bit now. So the top of my tin piece has these, it almost looks like ruffles or it gives it a little movement. And I thought, why don't we put some ribbon up there to look like, you know, a little movement with ribbon. So this beautiful, beautiful ribbon that I got on 90% off last year, I could not believe it, 90% off. And there was actually stuff still in the store and that never, ever happens to me. But 90% off. So I saved a lot of money. I spent like 50 cents on this beautiful ribbon and it matches perfectly and I think because it doesn't have leaves on it and because it doesn't have like green greenery and it doesn't have like the rust colors for fall that this ribbon is perfect for any time that you craft with a sunflower because it doesn't scream anything other than sunflower. I'm just going to push that down on there and use my fingers to run across and make sure that it is holding those curves that are underneath it. And then of course we're going to lock it in place with a little bit more. Now I'm using that same outdoor Mod Podge and I will tell you too, the Mod Podge, the outdoor Mod Podge will give it a shiny look. All you have to do is after you use your Mod Podge and put as many layers as you're going to put on of your Mod Podge, you can use some um, polyurethane, use the water base so it doesn't yellow anything and just go over your entire project. Of course, once it is completely dried. There may, I know there's some uh, cure time for that Mod Podge as well. So just read your directions, make sure you're doing it right so nothing's falling apart midsummer at your house. Especially if you live in the South like we do. Now the top got the Mod Podge, but the back, I'm going to take the edge around the back with a little hot glue to hold it in place where there's a nice finished edge. So it looks like we got it from the store maybe. See, even, even so, 
your ribbon will move a little bit. So just pat it back down before you turn it around. Make sure everything's staying where it needs to. And I decided that the bottom needed a coordinating stripe. So I'm just going to take a brush that is a little bit thinner than the width of that ribbon. And put it down into that Mod Podge. Press it into place. And then I will take another layer and go right over the top. This is going to seal it in. Make it last a long time. And when it dries, it does get a little a little more see-through, I guess you could say. It doesn't stay as crisp white, and I'm fine with that. Y'all look how these turned out. Oh my goodness. The chair is just out there for display purposes. I brought these in the yard so that you could see these outside. Look at the stunning table. I should have done a side-by-side -side because it doesn't look anything like it looked to begin with. If you enjoy budget-friendly DIYs and you've enjoyed these flips and creations subscribe to the channel because you do not want to miss anything look at the lights i should have shown you the lights at nighttime but i didn't but use your imagination with all five bulbs lit up very pretty it doesn't show a ton of light it just gives a little bit of light which is perfect for you know maybe a romantic evening on the porch who knows a little drink, unwind at the end of the day, a little glass of tea, perfection. Do you like these? I know I do. I really hope that you do. I thank you so very much for stopping by. Be sure you see the links in the description box for more videos and for information on how you can go on that cruise with me. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye!